Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of More Than The Career Podcast, the podcast about who people are and not necessarily what they do. Today we have a very special guest. So when I was looking for who was going to be our first guest on the show, I reached out to Twitter and a couple people suggested other people and Chris Brogan chimed in and he suggested Ben Fanning. So I connected with Ben and Ben was our first guest. So Ben Fanning is an author, he is a burnout specialist, a podcaster, and just an overall business consultant who is a really cool guy and he's going to explain to you what a burnout specialist is in a little bit. He's a super cool guy. We talk about what makes him tick, how he got started in his career, different things that he's into. We even touch the topic of Alabama football. So without further ado, I bring you Ben Fanning. Enjoy. All right, Ben, thanks for being on the show with us. I understand you are the chief burnout specialist. So tell us a little bit about your business, and then let's talk about who you are and what makes you tick. Yeah, okay, great. Well, Greg, I am delighted to be on with you today. Number one, and, the first, uh, first guest here. Yeah, awesome. So I feel lucky, lucky to be here, and this is going to be a lot of fun today. And so I'm chief burnout officer because after years of working in – sort of going town to town, city to city, always taking the next position for the next great opportunity, I burned out. And uh, after a couple of good mentors and a lot of introspection, I was able to sort of get myself unburned out. And now I help others deal with that. And I actually still work for a Fortune 50 company. And I, for years, wanted to quit that quit the rat race. And what I found was that those are actually the people or a lot of the people that that I could actually help. And so what I've done is I've launched um, a business outside of that corporate environment and really have a foot in in both worlds. And I'm a coach and consultant and most recently author of a book called The Quit Alternative, The Blueprint for Creating the Job You Love Without Quitting. And if you're an entrepreneur or if you work in in the corporate world, you know, wherever you work, quitting always seems to be that that lurking possibility, especially when times get tough. And so in this book and and my blogging and and podcasting and whatnot, everything is focused around giving people and empowering them to give them an alternative to quitting and rejuvenating and reigniting their career and their business and their approach to living really right where they are. Love it. That's awesome. You, You are probably the only person I've ever met, maybe the only person in the world that has ever categorized himself as a chief burnout officer. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it took some time, but I realized I am the CBO because I, you know, you know, honestly, people are like, well, do you still face burnout? Because I mean, you're working different, you yeah. know, different capacities. I'm like, yes, of course, every day, you know, we all face that because there is this thing about, and we we're talking about before the things got started here around work-life balance. Yep. Instead of facing the balance, I mean, balance is just something that people, it's almost like um, a seesaw where you're always at work and you're trying to balance and juggle all these things in one, in a one place. And I think one of the things that I really like, uh, Greg, about your podcast is you're trying to get behind the business a little bit and get into people's personal approaches to living and working and making it work in a more integrative sense. And I think that approach alone can really help people uh, that are facing burnout or have gone through that themselves and find a much better and more effective way to do it and achieve success. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for saying that because, you know, <laughs> part of the podcast, like what we were talking about is, you know, we are more than our jobs, right? I'm more than a yeah. WordPress developer, yeah. marketer. You know, I am, you yeah. know, if you could see in the back, I have guitars in the background. Yeah. I have art I on my walls. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it's like, that's all the stuff that makes me tick. So, um, I know you're from South Carolina. Did you grow yes, up in right. South Carolina? I grew up in Alabama, so oh, okay. I grew up in the South. So, and, uh, so quick uh, Alabama uh, question you have to ask: Is it Roll Tide or War Eagle? Oh, in your Roll household? Tide. Okay, just making sure. No, of course. No, I actually, I grew up near Auburn. Okay. Uh, in, a, in a small town, but I was born in Tuscaloosa and went to school there, and so yeah, it's okay. a guy. But 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 our family split. I've got a lot Uh-oh. of family from Auburn, so Uh-oh. we we, we struggle with into, that. Hopefully, they married in right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. My wife's Alabama. It's my dad's okay. side of the family. Oh, so man. we don't talk about football at their house. Yeah, that's so uh, funny. You know, I'm a huge sports fan, right? And it sounds like you are too, you know, especially growing up there, right? Yeah. So it's like, I'm a big New York Yankees fan because that's where I grew oh, up. I grew oh, up there, man. right? Oh, so, gosh. Yeah. But I would go to Sunday barbecues, you know, at my grandparents' yeah. house. And it was, you know, you only talk about one thing during baseball season. You talk about the New York Yankees 
or you just sit right. and you just don't talk about baseball. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds pretty similar. Yeah. I lived in Manhattan for a few years okay. and people kept asking me, you know, who I, I'm like, okay, okay, Yankees, you know, because yeah. uh, then the Mets fans would get upset. Yeah. And then if Jets, you know, Jets Giants question right. kept coming up. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, they're crazy. Up there. <laughs> That's so funny. But, um, uh, so, so what, what, what type of hobbies do you have? What, what do you like to do when you're outside of work? What do you do? You know, let's yeah. tie back into that burnout, you know, thing that we're talking about. Like, what do you do outside of work, you know, and what makes you tick and what makes, you know, stops the burnout in your life? Yeah. So a couple things, uh, and, and I would recommend some of this. So one of the things is for anybody that that's, that's working in an environment where, you know, it's high stress, high impact, high risk taking or, or whatever. It's important to have physical activity outside of Love just it. going home and relaxing in the evenings. And I find like as you become adults, like it seems like when people are kids, there's all kinds of outdoor play activities. But when you get older, mm -hmm. the only acceptable thing seems to be to have fun is to like go to your kids sporting events or go to a place like a movie or a concert or whatever, you know, where you're sitting down. And it's like, you know, there are so many opportunities for adult play. And for me personally, I love to play tennis. I used to love to play basketball, but I kept getting injured and whatnot. So, uh, so I sort of, sort of uh, got away from that a little bit. But tennis and racquetball, stuff like that has a great team environment. I am also have started working out um, with a trainer that sort of helps uh, push me a little bit. But one of the things I do outside of work that has really created a lot of openings for me personally and allow me to sort of step into this more entrepreneurial mindset of risk taking and being in the moment and honestly being more alive is um, taking improv classes. Oh, that's very it's, funny you say that. Yeah, that, we, have some, oh, yeah? we have a bunch in common right there. Oh, okay, right. okay. Well, <clears throat> for me, man, like I had never really thought about that being an option, but a couple of years ago, and then this is a question I would say for your audience, like if you're really thinking about something that would really make a big impact for you is think about something in your past that maybe intrigued you a little bit that you heard about, but scared you a little bit. And you said, sure. no, 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 not me. And a couple, uh, well, several years ago when I was living in Manhattan, I had a friend that took improv classes there. And he invited me to his first recital, and I was in awe. And I thought, man, that sounds so cool or looks so cool, but I would never do that. And then years later, I'm in Charleston. Someone sends me this, this class that, uh, that they're leading at this local improv theater, and I go and I do it, and I love the first class. And we go for seven weeks. And then at the end, there's this recital. And I was scared to death before my first recital. And it was all loving, loving friends and family, but it was so scary. But after I did that, I felt so invigorated. Right. I, it, it's helped me with my public speaking so much. Absolutely. I feel so much more competent. And it's just a really fun place to be. So no matter you know, where you are in life, how old you are, where you are, you know, find a place where you can play and sure. uh, do it with others. That's, that's funny. Do you had been a public speaker before your improv classes, though. Sure. Yes, but so, like, I was not a fan of not a fan of like taking questions. Like I was okay. good as long as I was like you in know every, yeah everything was structured. There. Yeah. Coming out of this corporate world where I was doing like PowerPoint to death, mm. I would never just like freely you know have all this interaction. But what I found was when, when I brought some of that improv and, and that yes and mentality. I had to asking questions and getting. I had way more involvement. Uh, my my speaking got a lot more fun for me, and I think the crowd enjoyed it so much more. And new opportunities started to open up yep. through that. Yeah, and and probably a lot of those opportunities came out because they got to really see who you were, and <laughs> yeah. not just what yeah. you knew, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. like that's so great point. That's so important. Yeah. Like you know, we are yeah. more than our job. And if you keep listening to this show, I mean. I'm going to probably say that a bazillion times and maybe I'll find another way to say that. You that's know, a great a slogan. Yeah, I mean, you are not, you your, are not job, your job and you are more than your job. And and that's the beautiful thing about it. Because you know when you're when you're taking risk, when you're making a presentation or you're doing whatever in your job, not everything is going to work out 100% correctly. Right. <laughs> I mean, sometimes <laughs> there'll be failures yeah. and there'll be learning experiences yeah. and the fact that you are not just your job. It's, it's, it's nice to diversify because there'll be other things that you can 
uh, take advantage of to find that success and to help you keep going in those times of struggle. I love the fact that you work out with a personal trainer because I do two actually three times a week. And uh, my my trainer, Andrew Hangardner here in uh, Arizona, keeps me motivated, keeps me on point. And what happened was, is uh, I was in a lot. Of, I was in really good shape when I started the company, <laughs> and then I got too busy to work out and to exercise. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of, and I always played sports, you know, and I always was active there. But I was always, I'm just too busy. I can't do this. I can't go to the gym. And then I was just like, something needed to change. I was overweight. I was unhappy. The business was going great, you know. My golf handicap went through the roof. You know, but at the same time, like, you know, I wasn't really living. You know what I mean? So, like, getting back into that. I love the fact that you work some sort of fitness into, you know, your daily routine, like, who you are. And also, like, I don't know, do you find that that helps with, like, creative problem solving if you're out there kind of doing this mind mind numbing exercise and this sort of, like, okay, I'm stepping away from my professional role. I'm stepping away from the coach. I'm moving into this. Does that help you or? Yeah, Greg, that's a great question. Um, it, it helps me a lot. And I think one of the the keys is, I mean, I've always sort of been after a fitness regimen or routine in some way, but I haven't always had a trainer. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that's really helped me is having that trainer provide the environment and the instruction where I can learn and I don't have to be in charge of every single moment in that workout. It's almost like I don't have to prepare other than maybe psych myself up a little bit to sweat. And and, and that's been the big differentiator because once I, you know, I leave, like I I have a reason to go to the gym because Mm -hmm. that guy is going to be there waiting on me and we're going to get right into it. And it totally clears my mind. And it's very yeah. similar to like for me being on the tennis court or on the improv stage is that you don't have to plan. You're fully sure. in the moment executing the uh, task at hand. And then when you come back to your work, it's like you've got a clean slate. Right. It's I mean, like it's you're amazing. living. I mean, it, those moments you're really living because you're, yeah. you know, you're in the moment. You're not like uh you, you know, you, you're not like projecting or thinking about future events. You know, you're just taking care of like, so if somebody hits a cross shot to you in tennis, you're just <laughs> taking care of that. Yeah. You know, you're making contact, making sure it's in balance yeah. at that moment, you know, and that's the most mm-hmm. important thing to you. That's, that's really, really, that's, that's cool. Did you play a lot of tennis or, I mean, is tennis your passion or is that? Yeah. Is that? Well, it, I played a little bit as a kid and then I played through high school and then I put it away for years. Like I didn't have time for it. I wanted. I lived in Denver for a while. I was going to be, sure. you know, hiking, skiing, whatever, and other things. I never really um, f- tapped into that until I moved back to Charleston, and there were all these tennis teams around. And so, once tennis became about a team and more fun, and it wasn't just me by myself, right. there were other people involved. It became a lot more fun, and even having beers afterwards. I mean, it just yeah. became this more social activity. Yeah. And um, when you've got a team counting on you to show up, you're much more likely, just like with a trainer, you're much more likely to go. Absolutely. And so I found myself getting back into it and really finding the enjoyment of it. Yep. So. We, we, I play in a, soccer, in a soccer league here in Texas. Okay, all right. And I'm yeah. lucky enough that I can play all year round. Right. I mean, we do start about yeah. 630 a.m. in August and July. To, oh, you have to, to out there. You have to. But, it's so hot. you know, yeah. I was talking to one of my uh, teammates actually yesterday at lunch and, I, and we were looking to add some new people to the squad because some other people are dropping out. And then the first thing was, is can we hang out with this guy? Do we want to, you <laughs> yeah, know, can we yeah. hang out? Like, can we yeah. like, have fun? Can we, like you just said, can we go for a beer after the match? Can we do this? Yeah. And like. Yep. That's so important. Like even in like we were talking pre-show here about business is like I didn't start marketing yeah. press to work with a bunch of people that I didn't like or that yeah, I, there, a bunch of people. There that are plenty I, of other places that you could work for that. Yeah. There's a bunch of ad agencies <laughs> that I kept getting. There's a bunch of agencies yeah. I kept getting fired from. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. Okay. So okay, it was like yeah. it, it was yeah. like I didn't start this to not have fun or to live a life. I started yeah. this to hang out with good people and to meet good people and have conversation and. And do some great work along the way. Oh, man. That's a nice slogan. Yeah, I like that. You know what I mean? I just made that up. I'm a marketing guy. What do you want? (laughs) Yeah, no, that's good. No, it's really important because you – and and one of the things too is – and I had a meeting this morning that 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 Jim Rohn quote Mm. 
in that being that you are what it is, is something like you yeah, are the average of the five, five people you spend the most time with. So just us spending time together today on this podcast with someone of sort of a similar life belief and approach to work, sure. it helps me. It helps push me farther down that road. And we often go about life, even if you work in a corporate environment where you don't always get to choose your coworkers, there are moments where you can choose. Yep. And no different than who you're going to play soccer with. If You right. can't always choose all the players, but when you do have a choice, choose people that inspire, that are positive, that are optimistic, that have a real openness and celebration to life. And it, it makes all the difference. It really does. Hey, Connor, I love that quote too. I, I'm a I'm a fan of the Entrepreneur on Fire podcast. And okay, yeah. Doing this. I actually just yeah. recorded an episode with him that drops. Oh, on, cool! Uh, Congratulations, February, February 1st. And um, <laughs> oh, that's great. I, and I always think about that quote, you know. And I think about that in different social situations and different life situations. And I think consciously now: Are these people raising my average or lowering my average? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And then if, if you can use that to make some decisions based upon, yeah. you, know, you know, where we are. So that's funny. It's super. It sounds like we're very, very similar on the same page. I'm Greg. Uh, Chris Brogan actually recommended yeah. us get together for this. Yeah. Shout out to that guy. Yeah. yeah uh-huh. He's his, his Manchu is the, is the same deal, you know, where it's sort of his Chris Brogan tribe of, of, of people that are supporting each other. And I suspect that you're in the Manchu like I am. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So who, who was your hero growing up, or who have you looked up to and or modeled, you know, a good role model for you? Well, it's interesting. Um, the the models of when when I grew up, I was always had this this vision of being a jet setting CEO <laughs> of a huge company. And having my own jet and yeah. flying around doing deals, yeah. and I was on that trajectory for the longest time. So it was sort of like the traditional, uh, you know, big corporate types, you know. And I, and I think that that's still good stuff for a lot of people. And there's nothing wrong with following, you know, the uh, the big corporate um, you know, leaders out in the world, but at over time as as my interest has grown beyond that and into being more of an entrepreneur, having being more flexible um, and really inspiring other people to do great work. I've really gravitated more towards people like, and you probably know Seth Godin. Sure. That's one of my big ones. Um, and his new book, um, what is it? Uh, it's always your turn. Yep. I don't know. Is, am I, am I, am I, I'm not getting the name quite right. Do I have it around here? Um, it's something like that. Yeah, his. I'm a, I'm a huge Seth Godin fan, and as you mentioned, Chris Brogan, I'm a really big um, fan of his from the standpoint of he used to work in a corporate environment and discovered it wasn't exactly the right fit. But what he's found is a lot of the principles of being an entrepreneur and working in even the large business world apply across the spectrum. And so he helps people, you know, really take that sense of ownership no matter where they are. Yeah. I, I so, love, I love his new, the owner's mind podcast that he has. Oh yeah. Like Isn't that between, great? Between, yeah. <clears throat> again, it goes between the work life balance and the mind, yeah. and like the fitness and the, you know, how, how, how fit are you all around? Oh my gosh. Isn't that you know? powerful? And I was actually, you know, I, I would listen to his, that podcast all the time uh, on the way to the gym at seven o'clock in the morning to meet my trainer. And I would, <laughs> you would like that. I would say, no, Seven and, I would, get yeah, and I would say, you know, like this is, you know, this is where I need to be. And like, yeah. although, you know, I, I moved rather quickly with this show from concept to here we are recording an interview, you know, that was always in the back of my mind, you know, yeah. more about, you know, how fit are we as people? How, how are we connecting on a personal level? How are we, yeah. you know, I know way more now about you, the, the burnout specialist, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I know not to wear orange and blue to your household if I should ever. <laughs> <laughs> so. Please no. And, <clears throat> hey, and one of the things that one of the things that connects us, is, and, and I want to mention this as another thing I'm really, really a big fan of, and sort of a mentor of mine is Simon Sinek. Are you familiar with him? Yes. Simon Sinek, start with why and leader, yep. leaders eat last. Yep. But I think you, you and I probably have a lot of the same why of why we do. Yeah, absolutely. What we do. 
And it does happen to cross over into this real human side of business that that's so important and connects us. And I suspect that's one of the reasons you're doing such a cool podcast yeah. here, a uh, related sort of behind the music, but behind the business. You, you know, uh, that was very fun. That, I'm a huge fan of the behind the music, and that's sort of <laughs> what I always was like. Oh, I'd love to do this, you know. So yeah, I promise not to cry today. <laughs> I promise we, not to make you cry, <laughs> <laughs> which is part of it, right? And that Simon so Sinek good. is what is what to do what to do when it's your turn, yep. and then dot dot dot. It's always your turn. Yeah, I, that's I love the it. Book. That's yeah, awesome. That's a really yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here, and let's just yeah. ra- ra- in wrapping up. Yeah. Let's just see if you had one piece of advice to give somebody to create some happiness in their life. What do you think? Ooh. What would that be? Um, create the happiness. Um, that's it. Create the happiness instead of finding happiness or finding the job you love or finding you know finding whatever. Get on a mission to create the damn thing. And so <laughs> I yeah. mean that's it really simple, that's the right? art. It, it sounds yeah. simple, but. It's one of those things. It's it's simple, not easy. Yeah, it's like well, even even if you're an entrepreneur and you're always and they talk about we well, need to go find your business model. What's your business model? Well, you know, just like you and we talked about Chris Brogan and and uh, Seth Godin. These guys are creating something that really fits to them, their skill sets, their interest level, and we're in a world of the answers out there. Mm-hmm. You know, the answer is out there, and I, I just need to go fit myself yeah. to it. And the reality is, I think for true happiness, and, and I found this to be the case within my own life and a lot of my clients, is it's just getting on a mission to, to to bring your whole self to your work environment and create it. You know, create your own happiness and joy right there. I love it. I, and I just heard a quote recently uh, from Henry Ford that Henry Ford said, "If I asked the people what they wanted, they would have told me faster horses." <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know Very what I mean? Good. So it's just like that whole thing. Go out there and create something. That's at, that, that's all, that's for you. That's for, you know, specifically for you and whatnot. You know, I, I absolutely love that. So last question here, who else should I look to to get on the show? Who else should I reach out to? Who would you like to see on the show? Um, Scott Dinsmore. Okay. From Live Your Legend. Okay. He's a mentor of mine too. So I, I, I think he, because he is about to embark on this world journey. Or he, he just has. So it'll be it's gonna be going around the world for a year or something. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's interesting. And, and he's an entrepreneur and it's interesting to see how that's playing out. So and I would love to hear um sort of the behind the music on Simon Sinek. Okay. And right. um I follow him on Instagram and it's interesting to see what he's up to. So I'll be curious to to hear that. Okay, well, uh, you guys, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be reaching out to you, coming after you soon. All right, so. yeah, tell Ben. So I don't know how far <laughs> we'll go. Hopefully, it'll go far with these guys. Hey, who knows? So hey, so, so if our guests are looking to find out more about you and what you do, where can where can I show? Where can I direct them? Yeah, direct them to benfanning.com, and they can go to benfanning.com/slash/quit, and they can get the scoop on the book. Right now, I'm exclusively offering it on my own website, and I'll send the hardback book directly to your door, have it delivered there for just the cost of freight, which is nine ninety nine, and I include some bonuses and things like that because I really feel that the message of the quit alternative is so important that I want to get it in as many hands as possible, and so that's where they can get the book. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank sure. you for being guest one on the show. Thanks, Greg. It, it awesome I feel like hanging. a lucky man. Yeah, it was, great. <laughs> it was awesome hanging out and getting to know you better, and uh, look forward to staying in touch over time. Thanks, Greg. All right, take care. Thank you. Right. We're so happy to have Ben as our first guest. Ben was awesome. He totally embraced the whole concept of what we we're trying to do and embodied the spirit of you are not your job, that you know there is more to you than what you do professionally. And although we tied it all back in together, you know, it's a big thing that we all have different interests. And now I hope that you know a little bit more about Ben and you feel a little bit more connected to him, not only what he does, but really who he is. I know that I do. So, Ben, thank you so much for being our guest. Uh, it was a pleasure having you on and having you be the first guest uh, we recorded the interview with. Thank you, Chris, for suggesting Ben. It was absolutely perfect. So, until next time, I'm Greg Taylor from Marketing Press. Remember, you are who, you are not your job. And if you want to subscribe to us, we would love for you to click on iTunes and subscribe to us. Or check us out on YouTube and you can watch these videos. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.